Now we discuss stress strain curve for a metallic wire. So when you take a metallic wire, suspend from a rigid support at the free end, you increase the load from 0 to maximum value till the wire will be breaks. For different loads, find out the different strains produced in the wire. For different loads, you will get the different stress and correspondingly you will get different strain until the wire will be break. Then such kind of the graph will be observed. That is actually called as the stress strain curve for a metallic wire. So what we can understand from that graph? If you observe carefully from the point O to A, when the stress is going to be increased, the strain also going to be increased linearly. Linearly means stress is directly proportional to the strain. So when our stress is directly proportional to the strain, already we studied that, that is nothing but Hooke's law within the elastic limit or within the proportionality limit stress is going to be directly proportional to the strain. So, A corresponds to the what means proportionality limit that means up to the A point the wire will be under the Hooke's law, it obeys the Hooke's law. That means at A point if you release the load the body will be again regains to its original size and shape or you can say it will be comes to the original length. Whatever may be work is done in producing the strain up to the point A. Already we discussed that that work done will be stored in the form of the strain energy. So at A point on releasing the load, then simply whatever may be energy is stored that will be recovered, that will be recovered. So A point is actually called as the proportionality limit. Regarding this region, we will discuss some more uh, afterwards. Now go to the B point. If you take from A point to B point, A point to B point is not actually a straight line. It is a little bit curved. But at B point, again if you release the load, then what happens? Again the body will be comes to the original length. So what you can understand from here, from A to B, the stress is not going to be proportional to the strain, there is no direct proportionality. That means from A to B it is not obeying the Hooke's law. Hooke's law is not obeyed from A to B, this cannot be, this cannot be obeyed. But at B point whenever you release the load, at B point whenever you release the load again it will be comes to the what original uh, size and also original shape. That means here this maximum stress, even you apply the maximum stress and after remove, releasing the that maximum load, the body is going to be come to the what original size. So this maximum stress is simply can be called as the elastic limit that can be called as the elastic limit. Now after this, after elastic limit, when you go on increasing the load on the wire, then what happens? And no doubt at all, the body will be permanently changes. That means there will be permanent change in the length will be produced. It does not obey the Hooke's law and however, it is not present within the elastic limit. So, when you take the a point C for example after the elastic limit, at C point water may be load is there, water may be stress is there if you release. Now the body will not come to the original size like this and moreover it will becomes differently. That means there will be permanent strain will be produced in the wire or in the body. Hence C point is actually called as the permanent set. C point is called as the permanent set. That means after the B point, after the elastic 
limit after that point whenever you are going on increasing the load itself that the wire or you can say the body will be just flow like a fluid that means without increasing the more weight or more load in the wire itself the wire is going to be elongated very easily or you can say wire is going to be strained very easily that means that point b simply can be called as the yield point then soon after the permanent set without increasing the much load the wire will be elongate 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 and finally it will be breaks that stress corresponding the uh, wire where it is going to be break that is simply can be called as the breaking strength and like this simply we can understand the behavior of the wire under increasing the load and what are more other points we have to understand from this graph if you observe carefully from b to d that means before fracturing the length of the graph if you observe carefully is very very high here the graph length is very very high from b to d that means if the length is very very high graph length is very very high means what does it mean the wire can be elongate when it is elongating what is happening the thickness that is radius also going to be decrease that means the plastic behavior from b to d will explains that the length of the graph from b to d explains that to what thickness that wire can be drawn that means if the length is very very high that kind of the body or that kind of the wire can be drawn into the very 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 thin wires that means such kind of the materials we can call as the ductile materials so whether the given material is ductile material or brittle material easily we can understand from this the length between b and also d if the length is very very high that means before breaking the wire can be drawn into the what very very thin wires then such a material we can call as a ductile material soon after the b point if somewhere it will be breaks here say for example the length is very very less that means it can be it cannot be drawn into the very thin wires then such kind of the material already we can we know that it can be called as the brittle materials so from this graph itself we can understand that which material is very useful in, in drawing the very very thin wires and also which is not useful already we know that copper and also this is silver and also gold these are the very good ductile materials that means in such cases this distance will be very very large and hence they can be drawn into the thin wires and also very very thin sheets so this is a discussion of the stress strain curve for a metallic wire some materials such as rubber these can be stretched uh, up to the 6 times to the 7 times to their original length such kind of the materials are actually called as the elastomers in such case how to how you get the the stress strain graph in the case of the elastomers the graph may be comes like this it cannot follow the no doubt at all it cannot follow the any kind of the hooks law like that but even it does not follow the hooks law on releasing the the maximum load that we applied there it comes to the what means original size and shape that means that uh, rubber can be show the elastic property uh, even you apply the large amount of the force on it but however it will not obey the hooks law some elastomers also will have the stress strain graph like this the important thing here is in the case of the rubber whenever you release the load it will not come to the in this path that means it comes to the in another way like this so what is the importance of this one if you observe carefully that graph
say have I taken up to the proportionality limit. The area under the graph, this area, area is equal to nothing but it is a triangular shape half into you will get stress into strain. Half into stress into strain means already you know that energy stored per unit value, elastic energy stored per unit value or strain energy stored per unit value. Or into volume if I take is the total strain energy or elastic energy stored in the body. So, at the proportional limit if you release the load already you know that it comes to the original length. So, in order to strain the body whatever may be work is done on unloading the load same amount of the work done whatever may be is converted in the form of the energy that will be again comes outside. That means, no energy loss will be takes place in this case of the uh, this uh, metal behavior stress strain energy curve. But whenever you take the for example, rubber here, while loading it is following the O2A. That means, the area under the this graph gives the, the amount of work done in producing the strain in the rubber. But whenever load is removed, now, this becomes the what the energy that is released during the unloading. So, what you observed here some part of the energy is get wasted, some part of the energy is get wasted in the form of the heat energy. This kind of the behavior is simply can be called as the elastic hysteresis. So, if the area of this OA, this area is very very large then what you can understand in loading and also unloading large amount of the heat energy will be get wasted. So, already you know that uh, in the car in four wheelers there are tires. So, when they are actually moving and there also will be experience the large amount of the pressure like this and because of that there also will be much strained much strain and also when they are unloaded that means they will come to the original size and shape. At that time what happens they will be follow the such kind of the graph. If this graph is very very large that means the rubber will follow this kind of the path like this and a large amount of the heat energy is get wasted like that then it will be damaged very easily. So, we will choose such a rubber uh, whose hysteresis elastic hysteresis curve area is very very much less. So, this is very very important discussion you have to understand. Let us discuss again about the stress strain curve. What more information we can get? On the x axis I have taken strain y axis stress. Now, I am going to draw the graph up to the proportionality limit only, this is up to the proportionality limit. Now, what is the importance of or what important conclusions you can get from this graph? If you take the, the slope of the graph, this is theta, say this is O A B, slope of the graph tan theta that is equal to you will get a b by o b, a b by o b, a b corresponds to the stress, o b corresponds to strain. So, what you understood here? The slope of the graph is going to be give the, the value of elastic constant. If you try that graph in the case of a wire, then this slope of the graph will give the tensor modulus. This is one important thing we have to remember. And the second one, what gives the, the area of the graph?
area of the graph. This is slope of the graph. Area of the graph, area under the graph, area is equal to, it is like a triangle, so we will get half into base strain is there, actually OB strain, height AB that is equal to what stress is there. So, area under the graph gives the strain energy or elastic energy produced per unit value, per unit value that is equal to half into stress into strain. This is one more important thing you have to remember. Instead of the graph between stress and strain, we also may be draw between elongation versus force, provided the force is going to be applied within the elastic limit. And again you are going to be get the same kind of the straight line. Now, what gives the, the slope of this one? Slope is nothing but again. Slope is equal to you will get AB by OB. You will get force by elongation. What is the importance of this one? Force by elongation. You already know the formula for the Young's modulus y is equal to fl by a e. Then f by e is equal to you will get y a by l. It is a constant. Moreover, this is actually called as the y a by l is actually called as the force constant or spring constant which will denote with a symbol k. So, this is the, the slope of the EFE graph. And next what gives the area? Area is equal to again it is a triangle. So, you will get half into force into elongation. What is this? What it gives actually? Very simple already you know. This area is going to be give, this is nothing but strain energy or elastic energy stored in the body. So, this information is very useful in solving the problems also. Let us discuss the, the elongation of a wire in different situations. Whenever a string or a wire is fixed to rigid support and whenever you apply the sum load, load applied is equal to here Emg and the length is length of the wire is equal to L, area of cross section is A that is equal to pi r square where r is equal to radius and Young's modulus of the wire is equal to say capital Y. Then how much elongation will be produced with the wire? Let us calculate. Now we know that whenever you apply the sum load, of course the load must be present within the elastic limit. Then you know formula for Young's modulus Y is equal to FL by A into E. Now, elongation of the wire you will get as E is equal to F L by A Y or elongation of the wire you can write as E is equal to F L by pi r square into Y. This is the expression for the elongation of the wire. So, elongation of the wire will be depend upon the nature of the wire, the load that is applied, the length of the wire and also inversely proportional to the, the square of the radius. So, this is the expression. 
Now, whenever you are given different wives and asked to find out the ratio of the elongations, simply by comparing the elongation of the two wives in different situations and by taking the ratio, you can find out the ratio of their elongations. For example, like this, E1 is equal to for the first wife, say, F1 L1 by pi R1 square Y1. For the second wife, you say, F2 L2 by pi r2 square y2 then ratio of the elongations you will get e1 by e2 is equal to you will get f1 by f2 l1 by l2 r2 square 1 by r1 square into y2 by y1. Now the same formula can be applied at different situations when the loads are same of the different wires loads are same you can cancel this same length you can cancel this, same radii that is same radius this also will be cancelled. Then simply the ratio of the elongations will be equal you will get y2 by y1. So depending upon the uh, different situations you can find out the, the elongation of the wires, the ratio of the elongation of the wires. Okay, next uh, let us discuss that what happens to the elongation of the wire whenever the load is present in the air and also in the liquid. For example, first of all the load is arranged in the air. The load which is attached to the wire is arranged in the air. Say at the time the elongation is equal to E. Now what happens to the elongation? whenever the load attached to it is kept in the liquid. What will become the new elongation E dash? So here initial elongation whenever the bodies or the load is present in the air, load is present in the air, you know formula E is equal to F L by A by where force is equal to here weight that is equal to how much means mg that is elongation E is equal to we can write mg L by Ay. Now let us see what happens to the elongation whenever the load is present in the liquid. Now look carefully now the load is inside the liquid. Whenever the body is placed in the liquid, already you know that it experiences the up thrust or buoyant force. Then what will become the, the resultant force acting on the wire that we have to find out. The resultant force that is going to be produce the strain in the body or that is going to be elongate the wire that we have to find out. So if you write a free body diagram of this one. This is the load EMG is acting. Now it is also experiencing the word up thrust and resultantly what is happening? Tension is going to be produced in the string which is responsible for the elongation of the wire. And of course here that force is exactly equal to the word here the tension produced and which is responsible for the word elongation of the wire. Now this tension we have to find out. Now resultant tension is equal to obviously we can write Amg minus up thrust. So tension or resultant force that is acting on the wire which is going to be uh, elongate or strain the body. F is equal to you have to write Amg minus. You see you know the formula for the up thrust. Whenever a body of value V is kept inside the liquid, then the up thrust experienced by the body is equal to is nothing but volume of the body, density of the liquid into G. So now we can write the resultant force acting on the Y. So let me call this is equal to F dash. So now we can write Mg is taken common 1 minus V 
rho L by m we have to write. Now f dash is equal to you can write m g into 1 minus density of the liquid by you see mass of the body by volume of the body is equal to density of the body. So, density of the body. Now, this is a resultant force which is going to be act on the wire to produce the elongation. Now, we can write the formula for the elongation E dash is equal to now resultant force is going to be changed. So, F dash L by A into Y. So, how to find out the E dash means simple E dash by E take this is equation 1 take this is equation 2 by taking equation 2 by 1 we get E dash by E is equal to F dash L by A Y by F L by A Y. So, here L by a y, L by a y gets cancelled, then E dash by E is equal to you will get F dash by F, then E dash by E is equal to F dash is equal to E is nothing but we got there M g into 1 minus rho L by rho b by F is equal to E is nothing but M g, M g, M g will be gets cancelled. The final elongation of the wire whenever the load is placed inside the liquid E dash is equal to you will get E into 1 minus density of the liquid by density of the body. This is the final expression. Say for example, the liquid is water here. So, what I have to write here E dash is equal to is nothing but E into 1 minus density of the water by density of the body. E dash is equal to E into 1 minus density of the water by density of the body. But you know relative density of the body is equal to e nothing but density of the body by density of the water. So, finally, the final elongation E dash is equal to you will get E into 1 minus 1 by rho, where here rho stands relative density. So, like this we can find out the, the final elongation of the wire whenever the load attached to it is immersed in the liquid. So, this is the important discussion we have to understand. We discuss next for example, a wire is suspended from a rigid support and a load is attached to it. The load is in the form of a sphere. Say the radius of the sphere is equal to small r. Let the elongation produced is equal to E. Remember here r is equal to radius of the sphere. Now, whenever the same wire is loaded with the another sphere of the same material, but the radius is given to you to R, then what will become the the elongation of the wire in this case. So, whenever you are asked to find out the answer like that, what you have to do? You see same wire, wire is not changed, only what is changing? Load is changing. So, you know formula for the elongation E is equal to F L by A Y. L, L corresponds to Y, length is not changing. A, area of the cross section of the wire, it is also not changing. Y, Young's modulus of the wire, it is also not changing. But only the force that is applied to the wire is changing. So, what you can write? E 1 by A 2 is equal to you can write F 1 by F 2. So, in this case the load 
here in the first case let me write here f 1 is equal to m 1 into g weight m 1 g which is equal to tension. But in the second case f 2 load is going to be changed why because when the size is going to be changed obviously the weight also will be changes yes, that is m 2 g m 1 it is in the form of the sphere. So, we can write density into value 4 by 3 pi r cube into g f 2 m 2 g it is also can be written in the form of the density into value 4 by 3 pi into 2 r whole cube into g. Then you will get E 1 by A 2 is equal to this by this. So, you will get rho 4 by 3 pi g rho 4 by 3 pi g will be gets cancelled you will get r cube by 2 r whole cube. So, initial elongation is given to you E final elongation you have to find out say that is equal to E dash is equal to you will get r cube by 8 r cube then E dash is equal to you can write 8 E. The only thing you have to remember here that water may be radius is given that is related to the load only not related to the wire. Wire is not changing in both cases only load is changing load radius is changing. So, obviously, the weight also will be changes and elongation will be changes like this. Let us find out the, the elongation of a wire due to its own weight. Say here a wire of length L of mass M and a radius small r suspended from a rigid support like this. In the previous discussions we did not consider the, the mass of the wire there we considered it is almost very negligible mass even mass is there negligible. But in this case we are not neglecting. Whenever we consider the, the weight of the this uh, wire the own weight also may be elongate the wire. So, what is the elongation you will get in this case then how to find out. Then if you observe carefully for example, if I take a point here then how much force will be acted at this point. Below this position some wire is going to be hang. So, the weight of this part will be acted at this point. Now, this weight may be produce the some elongation here and if you observe carefully every point from the bottom to the top at this point bottom point under this no load is there that means it may not be elongate and if you go up like this below every point the weight is going to be what increase and you will get more weight at this point of suspension and a very zero weight at the bottom position. That means every point is not going to be experience equal weights that means different points are going to be get the what different weights. Now, what I am going to do I am going to choose a, a small element a small element of length is equal to dx. Now, I am going to find out the first of all the elongation of this element due to this load and afterwards I will integrate that uh, equation for finding the total elongation of the wire. 
say under this element how much length of the wire is there means for example x is there. Then what is the weight of this one? Weight is equal to e nothing but here load is equal to e nothing but f is equal to m into g. m is equal to what? The mass of this part. The mass of the this part. Then how to get? Very simple. Let lambda is the mass of the wire per unit length. That is lambda is equal to total mass of the body by total length. Total mass of the wire by total length. Then how much you get per x length? That is equal to you will get lambda into x into g. This is per unit length. Then per x length is equal to how much you get? m by l into x that is lambda x into g. Then what is the formula for the elongation? Elongation is equal to already you know f l by a y. Do remember this elongation is only related to the small element dx and hence this I will write as d is equal to f into L. I am going to find out the elongation only in the element of length dx. So, I will write dx by a into y that is small elongation in the small element dx is equal to f means lambda x g into dx by a y. This is the formula for the elongation in the element dx. Then what is the total elongation of the wire that you will get from the integration. Integration of d gives the lambda x g by a y into d x. Length goes to where to where? 0 to L. Now elongation is equal to you will get lambda g by a y. Integration of x d x is equal to you know x square by 2 by applying the limits you will get L square by 2. So, Elongation of the wire due to the own weight you will get lambda g L square by 2 a y. This is equal to is nothing but you see lambda L is equal to what total mass of the wire. So, you will get m g L by 2 a y. This is the elongation of the wire due to the own weight. Next we discuss the elongation produced in a, a rod of non-uniform cross section. Say a rod is like this. of circular cross section and of course, this is the axis say here radius is equal to r 1 and here radius is equal to how much r 2. For the sake of simplicity here I am not going to be considered the, the weight of the rod, but here I am applying the a force f. Now, because of this force here, then how much you get the elongation in the rod that we have to find out. If it is a, a uniform rod, happily you can write the equation for the elongation E is equal to F L by A by, but it is not uniform, then what I have to do? Let me consider 
a small element dx. Let us write first of all the elongation of this element, then afterwards we will integrate that is all, simply you will get the answer. Now we got the length of the element, next what you have to get elongation, why because f is uniform I given here, length dx already we assumed, y for this material y is constant, next what you have to find out area of cross section then how to write, very simple, you observe carefully, I will magnify this one to understand very easily, I am magnifying this part, this part I am magnifying. this is the axis, okay. this is the r1, so this is the r1. Now this actually we require, this radius we require, we require actually this radius, say for example this is equal to r. Now the element distance from the point of suspension is equal to how much means x say for example this is equal to x. Now this radius is equal to is nothing but what I have to write r1 plus this part. If I take for example this is equal to theta and this part is equal to for example y then tan theta is equal to you can write y by x then y is equal to I can write x tan theta. So, r is equal to radius of this elemental part is equal to you will get r1 plus y that is equal to r1 plus x tan theta. Now see, now you got the force, you got the length of the element dx, you got the radius of this element also. Then you can write the very easily the elongation of this element as dE is equal to force EF, length of the element is equal to dx by radius, uh, area of cross section pi r square, r square is nothing but this r1 plus x tan theta whole square into y. Now you got the expression for the elongation of the small part. Then what is the total elongation of that? Total elongation is equal to nothing but integration of that one, integration of d e is equal to f by pi y will become common and integration of d x by r 1 plus x tan theta whole square you will get. Now this is equal to E is equal to f by pi y that we have to integrate from 0 to n. Yeah. So let me write here r1 plus x tan theta. is equal to t. Then this can become dx tan theta is equal to you will get dt. Then E is equal to will become f by a y d x means you will get d t by tan theta, tan theta will be comes up, comes outside 1 by t square. So, you will get t to the power of minus 2 into d t. You know the integration of t to the power of minus 2 and d t. So, you will get E is equal to 
f by a by tan theta t to the power of minus 2 that is equal to minus 2 plus 1 by minus 2 plus 1. Now, E is equal to can be written as here f by a by tan theta sorry it is not a it is pi by t to the power of minus 1 by minus 1 that is equal to you will get minus 1 by t. Now, e by pi by tan theta minus 1 by t means what I assumed here r 1 plus x tan theta where x is goes to 0 to n. Now, if you substitute the limits x is equal to 1 C L and then x is equal to 0 and then finally, you will get answer E is equal to F by F L by pi R 1 R 2 into y. I will give that simplification as your work. You simply write the limits. And of course, what is the tan theta value here, sir? If you observe carefully this tan theta value, theta. tan theta also we can write as this one. This total R2 this small one is r 1. So, tan theta you can write as r 2 minus r 1 by r 1. Now, substitute tan theta is equal to r 2 minus r 1 by r 1 and the limits from 0 to L and then finally, you will get the, the elongation in the rod. Let us discuss the thermal stress. For example, say you have a uniform rod which is fixed horizontally between the two rigid supports. Say the length of the rod is equal to L, area of cross section is A, Young's modulus of the material is Y and its coefficient of linear expansion is alpha. Let us see what happens. Whenever the temperature of the surroundings will be changes, what happens? We already said in the expansion of the solids, whenever the temperature changes, the body will be expand. Here the rod also will be expand. Actually, if it is free to expand, what happens? That free part will be expand by a amount say delta L. Now, this delta L is equal to elongation due to the change in the temperature is equal to you know the original length coefficient of linear expansion into change in the temperature. But actually it is not free, it is fixed again to the rigid support. Then what happens? This elongation will be prevented by the, this expansion will be prevented by this rigid support and because of that some stress will be produced. Now, water may be stress is produced in order to stop the this much of the expansion that stress we are going to be called as the thermal stress. So, thermal stress will be produced at the ends of this rods in order to stop the, the expansion. So, how much stress is really required? Stress. Stress already you know that Young's modulus into what? Strain. Then why? Actually due to the 
expansion how much strain is going to be produced that is delta L by L is equal to alpha into delta theta. So, water may be you know, expansion is going to be takes place that must be prevented by this thermal stress. So, stress is equal to nothing but y into strain. So, y into strain is equal to is nothing but you have alpha into delta t. So, thermal stress produced in the rod where it is fixed between the two rigid supports horizontally is equal to you will get y alpha into delta theta. You look here it is independent of the length and also area of cross section. Then how much thermal force will be produced? Force. Stress is equal to nothing but what? Force by area y alpha delta theta. Then thermal force f is equal to you will get y a alpha into delta theta. So, this is called as a thermal stress, this is called as a thermal force. Okay, let us solve one more problem basic on this stress strain graph. The stress strain graph for two materials are given like this. One material is A, other material is B, where the slope of A material is given 30 degrees and this angle is equal to given 30 degrees. And you are asked to find out the what is the ratio of their Young's moduli. You already studied that the slope of the stress strain curve gives the, the Young's modulus. So, Young's modulus y is equal to is nothing but slope y is equal to is nothing but tan theta. So, Young's modulus of A by Young's modulus of B is equal to tan theta of A by tan theta of B. So, y A by y B is equal to you will get for A material y the angle is equal to 30 that is equal to tan 30. For the B material y this total angle we have to take slope that is equal to 60 degrees. Tan 30 means you know 1 by root 3 this is root 3. So, y a by y b is equal to you will get 1 by 3 like that you can find out. You discuss one more problem here for example, the two y's a b and also C D are arranged like this. Say this is the mass m, this is the mass 2 m. And say their dimensions are same, that means length is same and area of cross section is same, but both are made up of the different material of Young's modulus y and 2 y. If lengths are so given to you, for example, lengths also different you say L1 and L2, say radii are R1 and R2. And say even Young's model is Y1 and Y2. Then you will be asked what is the ratio of elongations in the AB wire and CD wire. That is elongation of AB by elongation of CD is equal to how much? how to find out. Elongation formula already know E is equal to F L by A Y. So, what you require to find out elongation? Force is required, length is required, A is required, Y also required. So, elongation ratio of the two Y's can be written as F 1 by F 2, L 1 by L 2, R2 square by R1 square, here area of cross section inversely proportional. So, you wrote as R2 square by R1 square into Y2 by Y1 inversely proportional. Suppose you say in this problem the ratio of the lengths of the wires are given to you A and ratio of the radii are given to you for example, B 
and the ratio of the Young's model is given to you. See, then how to get even? I two, even. F one. F one is a load acting on the first wire, which I chosen as first wire. This is the first wire. So how much load is acting on it? Under this wire, how much load is there? Under this wire, mass m is there, two m is there. So total load is equal to you will get three m j by f two. This I chosen as the second wire. So under this wire, how much load is there? Only two m is there. So you can write two m j into given that l one by l two is equal to y. R1 by R2 is equal to B. That is R2 by R1 is equal to 1 by B. 1 by B whole square into y2 by y1. Given that y1 by y2 is equal to C. That is y2 by y1 is equal to 1 by C. So you will get finally the ratio of the elongation of the two wires is equal to 3 by 2 y. 3a by 2b square c.